Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So this is a multi-part video series where I am walking uh, you guys through the end-to-end -end workflow for creating a printed circuit board. This is the third and final segment of the video series. In the first segment, we created the schematic. In the second segment, we created the printed circuit board from the schematic. And then in this segment, what we're gonna do is we're going to create what is known as the Gerber files or the files that we will send to the printed circuit board manufacturing house to have it actually manufactured. And then I will walk you through the uh, uploading process into one of the websites that I use or the manufacturing houses I use uh, to create the actual printed circuit boards. So let's get on with it. All right, well, we're back. This is uh, part three. This is now that we have a printed circuit board, this is taking your printed circuit board uh, through the CAM process and then uploading it to a manufacturing uh, foundation to uh, have it manufactured. So let's go ahead and, and let's show you how to do that. So in Fusion, I'm sorry, in Eagle, it's a little uh, cumbersome uh, to do the CAM process. It's not quite as integrated as some of the, some, like the schematic to a PCB, but it's still straightforward anyway. So you click this little icon here called CAM processor it's going to open this window here now by default there are no uh, sections or jobs defined uh, fortunately you can define them and save them so that if you're you know doing this a lot it, it saves you from configuring it every time uh, more importantly uh, most of the design houses not only do they have drc files you can download for eagle they also have these cam files you can download and what it does is it outputs the cam in the format that they're looking for with the file names that they want saves a ton of time eliminates a lot of error this is a massive step forward uh, especially uh, from back in the old days when you kind of had to guess you know do you want to mirror it do you want to rotate it do you want upside down right side down these are all questions you had to ask your your, your fab house and now you don't have to do that anymore so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to load uh the the seed one here you can see it's the uh the one that i got uh downloaded it from the web i'm going to load it and instantly what you see is there's all these tabs that it's added right uh, these tabs are otherwise known as sections for the larger uh, job and it, what that's going to do is going to break down your file um, or break down your PCB into these different files so that it can be manufactured so it's going to for every one of these jobs it's going to create a separate Gerber file um, and Gerber is the format again used for sending it to the fab house Gerber is akin to the G code for 3d printing um, it's again just like G code it's a text Space file that tells the, the 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 devices that are making the printed circuit board how to lay down the copper. In this case, you have drills, slots and holes, solder paste bottom, solder paste top, uh, solder mask bottom, solder mask top, silk screen bottom, silk screen top, bottom and top layer. So what the solder paste top and bottom is that's where to put the uh, solder paste for surface mount devices. Typically, you make a stencil and then you use a squeegee and put uh, solder paste on your printed circuit board then lay your devices down on that and then the solder paste will be when you go through the oven heat it up it'll turn into actual solder and hold your parts on the solder mask is typically for a normal printed circuit board or a legacy printed circuit board that's the green part it covers up all your copper but leaves little holes where the things you want to solder are going to be. Um, that's really, really useful because it keeps the copper from oxidizing, which is not a huge deal. Um, but what it does do, it, uh, it, it stops bridging of solder between pins. Um, it's really super useful, especially when you have super tight surface mount parts. Uh, the silk screen again that's just the writing that's on the top or the bottom um, uh, you can put whatever you want in a silk screen and in fact you can put whatever you want in the solder mask or in the paste mask um, it really doesn't matter as long as uh, you have the minimum of what you need the top and the bottom layer here that's the top copper and the bottom copper uh, those are the essentially the most important files um, especially if you're getting a, a very complex printed circuit board made you might have multiple layers here uh, you know I've done printed circuit boards as many as 10 layers uh, that's uh, ridiculously complicated, I might add, uh, and I don't recommend it. Uh, in this case, I just want to point out one thing. Uh, we put those um, these values here, uh, the input and the output, we, we put them as values on the printed circuit board on the value layer. You'll notice here that values is not selected for the silk screen on the top. So if you were to select this here, it'll include it in a Gerber file. If you were not to select that, it would leave it out. And then this input and output text would not show up on your Gerber file. I'm going to select it and then I'm going to export this and I'm going to show you uh, on in the next step how it shows up. So I'm going to click process job. 
Um, it's going to say, hey, your project's not saved. You want to save it? Uh, yes, you do. And boom, there you go. That's it. Very unceremonious. And you're like, hey, wait a minute. Where are all my files? You said it's going to create all these files. Yes, indeed, it did. So uh, if we go back to the, uh, the uh, control panel here, you'll see in your project, all the files that it created here are in the project. Um, it's a little cumbersome, it's a little awkward, it's a little weird, um, but that's where it puts it. Uh, the naming conventions, more or less straightforward once you learn it. The text file here is actually the drill file. Uh, this is uh, the top uh, solder mask, this is the top paste, and the top uh, what is known as silk screen. I don't know why they use O, but they do. And TL is top layer, you know, BL is bottom layer. It's very straightforward. Um, so the next step is to take all these files, zip them up, and then upload them to the printed circuit board manufacturer that you want to use to do your uh, PCB. And I'm gonna walk you through that step next. Okay, so welcome back. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is the last step of the process. Um, here you'll see in front of you, I have the Seed Studio uh, website up. I've clicked on the Fusion uh, Printed Circuit Board Manufacturing tab here, and I've uploaded the Gerber files to their website. Now they have a nifty feature that is exceptionally useful. That is the Gerber viewer. Now in the past, uh, they haven't had this capability, so I've always used an external application called GerbView or GerbV, uh, which is part of an open source package to view my Gerber files to validate they, validate they look like what I want them to look like. Um, in this case, you can just use their Gerb viewer. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, so it's actually reading the Gerber files and processing it and it's going to show you what the, the board looks like. And you can see here, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, that's what the Gerber files that you produced through that CAM process that I just walked you through have uh, produced. And I mean, look at it. It's exactly what we want. And I'll, I'll tab over real quick here to... Uh, to back to the, the actual printed circuit board. And this is a picture of the printed circuit board as we designed it in the PCB. Um, and this is the uh, Gerber files. So you can see, uh, let's see if I can kind of do this here a little bit. Um, you can see that it is essentially uh, identical. Uh, so that's exactly what you were looking for. Now the colors are different and that's really quite immaterial, but um, this is what you're looking for. And this is just the top view. Uh, you can select the bottom view. You can see here, um, and if we were to change the layers, turn off the top view here, turn on the bottom view. Um, uh, there you go. It's essentially the same. I guess we got to turn off the silk screen too. place, names, and values. There you go. Um, you can see it's identical. Um, now you will notice one thing here with this picture. This is why it's important to use the foundry files. Um, uh, it is mirrored from what you see on the screen on the left hand side. Um, this is just, uh, if you were to turn the board physically over, it would look like what you see on the right hand side of the screen. Um, that's why it's important uh, to know whether or not your, your board manufacturer wants you to mirror the Gerber files or not. In this case, it's not mirrored. They mirror it for you automatically. So you're, you're cleared hot on that. So uh, there you go. That looks pretty awesome. So just walk you through the rest of the screen here for a minute. Um, so I like C because it's relatively inexpensive. In fact, it's not relatively inexpensive. It is incredibly inexpensive. Uh, I'm just gonna walk you through it real quick. The base material FR4, that is your base um, uh, uh, fiberglass boards that everyone's been using for forever since they moved away from the old uh, kind of uh, tan fiberglass boards. We're not doing aluminum or flex boards here, uh, so no worries. Uh, we have two layers. Uh, if you wanna make a one layer printed circuit board, you gotta get a little more crafty with routing. You could have done it on this one. I didn't do it. Uh, it doesn't save you any money. So if you click on one layer, you can see it's still $4.90 doesn't save you any money. Uh, in this case, it, it guesstimated your printed circuit board uh, dimensions at 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. Obviously, that's not 100 millimeters, um, but that's the smallest that uh, Sieb has. Um, and you can see here that they're testing this function. And if you click it, it'll fill it in. And if it doesn't fill it in properly, you type it in. Um, so quantity here, 10. Uh, I usually just go ahead and get 10. And here's why. Uh, you select five, the price doesn't go down, right? Not at all. You select 15, the price goes up dramatically, right? Um, so I usually don't need 10. I usually probably need five. But if I, you know, dork something up, 
um, uh, on one I can I have extras to, to work with in this case the number of different designs uh, that's uh, more of an advanced topic about uh, using panelization and putting multiple designs on a single thing here don't worry about that uh, the thickness of the print circuit board uh, 0.1 or 1.6 millimeters is, is standard that is the 0.06 uh, to thickness of a printed circuit board. That's just standard. Uh, you can get up to an eight layer printed circuit board uh, with that thickness. Uh, see here only does up to six layers, um, but whatever. So in this case, printed circuit board color, that's really the color of the solder, solder mask. Um, in the past, they used to uplift this. So if you wanted something other green, they would charge you extra. I did notice uh, that when you click on these, it doesn't change the price. So that's really, really cool. Uh, you know, if you want a blue or a yellow or a red printed circuit board, that's cool. The 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 most recent favorite color of purple doesn't appear to be here, but you know, uh, red is still kind of cool. I think blue would be kind of cool. Uh, white, I think, uh, quite honestly, would be a little annoying, but you know, it is what it is, especially with a. Uh, solder mask which uh, or with the um, silk screen which it doesn't look like you can select a silk screen color so I'm not sure how that would work so we'll just leave it at green uh, solder dam here this is actually the the tolerance between the solder mask and your pads uh, 0.4 millimeters is fine that's that's well within range for what we're dealing with if you had an exceptionally small um, uh, tolerance uh, surface mount parts that had you know like maybe 0.5 millimeter pad uh, pitch uh, you'd probably want to select this this 0.1 millimeter uh, tolerance here but here I'm gonna click on it and you can see what happens to the price goes up dramatically so you have to use a completely different set of processes to get that tight tolerance uh, so try to avoid it if you can copper weight uh, one ounce is is standard usually one ounce on the outsides if you have internal layers um, you do half ounce on internal and, and one ounce on the externals the uh, the top and the bottom if you have uh, something that is it's conducting a lot of power uh, you might want to use maybe two or three ounces here that gives you that extra copper to give you extra power density uh, the hole size 0.3 millimeters again we use a 20 millimeter hole size or 20 mil hole size on ours so uh, we're fine there and then the trace width here um, again I mentioned earlier six uh, six by six is, is, is standard what I use today I used to use eight and ten uh, six is kind of my go-to now um, if you want to do four or five uh, because you need it um, I just want to warn you I'm gonna click on the five here uh, you see the price goes up dramatically right and if you go to four even more um, so it costs them a lot of money because these smaller pitches require they have more failures so uh, they charge you more for it <clears throat> the rest of this burned and bl uh, blind and buried vias half holes and impedance control none of that um, so that's pretty cool uh, one thing to note here because we do have a surface mount part it is worth adding a stencil uh, stencil is what you put on your PCB to lay that uh, that that uh, solder down uh, with a squeegee so they offer this stenciling capability now um, I've never used their stencil uh, services uh, I've always got it from another uh, source from uh, an open source guy who does it with a laser cutter um, in this case uh, the stencil here is nine dollars and ninety cents um, that's a really good deal um, uh, you know four bucks for the print circuit boards and nine bucks for the stencil stencil this one is probably made out of tin you can use it forever um, if you have high confidence uh, that you're gonna be making a lot of these it's definitely worth the investment if you have a lot of printed circuit board uh, a lot of surface mount devices or if you have anything with a fine pitch definitely worth uh, doing it um, absolutely so uh, that's it. Look, so for uh, in this case, uh, fourteen dollars and and eighty cents U.S. Uh, that's a good deal. It's an extremely good deal. Well, so that was wrapping up the three-part series video. I hope you enjoyed this most recent video uh, on uh, moving the printed circuit board from the actual design file into the Gerber files and then uploading it to the website. Uh, yeah, I hope you find it useful. Overall, I hope you find the entire series useful. Uh, Eagle CAD is a very powerful piece of software, although a little complicated to use at times and not very user friendly. Um, I do intend on doing additional videos to kind of walk through some of the more advanced features of Eagle, but hopefully this little series here has given you the kind of overview and empower you with the information you need to uh, you know, take, make your uh, first uh, try at a printed circuit board. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Leave any questions or comments down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for new content. Thanks, everyone.